Let's learn how we can create a bar chart race in PowerPoint. A bar chart race is a bar chart that actually changes typically with time to show you how a particular parameter is evolving. In this case, the bar chart race that we are going to create has um, a row that shows the number of visitors coming to our e-commerce site and the number of leads coming in, uh, in from those visitors and the number of those that have actually added a product to their cart. So in April, May and June, we can see the trend here that the visitors are growing and the leads grew but shrink and add to cart also grew but shrink. So it looks like while we are getting more and more visitors, the number of leads and add to cart are not performing so well. How do we go about creating this from SlideSense or PPTX handle? First step, as always, is to create a template. And I'm going to download this sample template and show you what it looks like. This looks kind of like the output. Let's specifically talk about certain elements on this template. You'll notice that there are a set of shapes here and you can see the names of these shapes, these rectangles by going to uh, the select dropdown and choosing selection pane. You can also press Alt F10 to toggle this. That's the shortcut key. Now, every shape that is mapped to something from data can be renamed. So I can go to this shape, for example, which happens to be called title and double click to rename it to anything that I want. Now, I'm going to change it back to title because we will be using something meaningful to map these back to the data. Uh, so this is a rectangle that's called exclamation exclamation visitors bar. Now, there's something special about the use of exclamation exclamation. What that does is as far as the morph transition in PowerPoint is concerned, it will match the shape across slides. So if you name any object with two exclamation marks and you create a morph transition, that is, let me copy the slide or duplicate the slide and I move this shape wherever I want. Yeah, move it there and then change the transition to a morph transition. PowerPoint knows that these shapes have to be mapped to the shape with the same name in the next slide. The reason it knows it is because of the exclamation exclamation in front of the shape name. If you didn't put it, then it would try its best to match them to the closest shape, which may not always be what we want. So what we've done is number one, created the kind of template that we wanted. And we now have three rectangles that are named visitors bar, leads bar, and cart bar. That's the visitors bar, leads bar, and carts bar, cart bar. Uh, that apart, we also have text boxes for the visitors value, leads value, and cart value. We'll change the width of these based on the actual numbers and the text of these based on the actual numbers. This apart, we also have a text box named month. That's this one and we'll change the month itself based on how the series increments. Now, let's actually get the data. This is in a file called sales.csv and sales.csv has three rows, data set for the month of April, for May and for June. And of course, we could always add one more, let's say July 2020, you could feel free to put in whatever values you wanted. And let's say in 2020, we had even more visitors, but the number of leads fell further and the add to cart fell even more. Let's say this is a story that we want the bar chart race to show. So now we have this. I'm going to copy both of these files onto my temporary folder. And so this folder now has two files, the sales CSV file and the template uh, which is the PowerPoint presentation that you just saw. Now, let's start creating the rules that will map the data to the template. First set of rules that we want to place into a file called gramix.yaml is a standard boilerplate. Let me copy this and create the file. Yeah, this is called gramix.yaml and I'll save it. What this is saying is we want to have a URL 
named pptxhandler slash mov, which will create a file called output.pptx at the current URL. And this is going to use pptx handler version two, and it's going to take the file from template.pptx. When you do this and run slide sets in the same directory where the files are, so the files that I have are granx.yaml, sales.csv, and template.pptx. Now, when I run slide sense on this folder, it will create an output.pptx and open it. And this is what the output.pptx looks like. So file name is output. And it looks exactly like our original template because we've told it nothing more than take the template and put it into output.pptx. So that's as expected. Next, let's load the data. So we load the data and call it sales. We load it from the URL in the current directory, sales.csv. We also make one transformation. These transformations are done in Pandas. Pandas is a Python library that is used for all kinds of data transformations. And by setting the index to month, what we do is take the first column, sales.csv, let's look at the first column, the first column month. This becomes like the labels which we will use to identify the rest of the rows. So the next thing that we do is define a variable called max visitors. And this is defined using a function which takes the sales columns values and gets the maximum of those. This again is written using the panda syntax. Now we have the data. Let's start doing the rules mapping. We first say, I want to copy the slides based on the sales data set. So what this actually does is for every row in the sales data, it creates a new slide. And we also add a rule saying, I want these slides to have a morph transition. You remember why we want them to have a smooth transition and it should have a duration of one second. Now, you remember that we wanted to set the width of the bars and the text of the bars. So let's start with the width of the bars. So what this says is the visitors bar should have a width that is the copied slides data. So copy.val is the copied slides data. You remember that we said copy the slide based on each row of sales. So copy.val has that row. We take the visitors column from there divided by the maximum visitors. So if, um, let's take an example in the sales data set, if we had the first row, which was April, 2020, visitors was 400, the maximum was is 700. So it would be 400 divided by 700. We would then multiply that by three inches. The units by default are inches, you can change them, but by default it's three inches. And similarly for the leads bar, we take the leads data and the card data. So what this will do is for the largest of these, for the largest visitors bar, it will be three inches wide. And for anything smaller, maybe something that's half the size of that, it would be one and a half inches. With this, we have now set the width of the bars. Let's test it out. Let's see what happens when we actually run slide sets. What it's done is nothing. Oh, that's because I haven't saved this file. Now let me show you one more error that you might encounter. I have the output file open. I'm going to run slide sense. And it says permission denied output.pptx. That's because I already have output.pptx open. Unless you close it, it won't be able to generate the output. Now, it's generated four slides. And these four slides are, well, the number is four because we had four rows in the data and we said copy slide from the rows of data here from sales. And you'll notice that the widths are changing. And let me put this in slideshow mode and you'll be able to see the morph transition in effect. So that's a one second morph transition across these slides. But we still have a couple of gaps. The text doesn't indicate which month it is. The text doesn't indicate what the values are. So let's fix those. Uh, the next step to do is to adjust or set the text values. We say the visitor value shape is going to get a text from the data set, the copied slides, uh, copied rows data set, visitors column, leads column, and cards column. Finally, we take the month, and the month is not actually from the entire row, but from the index. We had set the index to month, and dot key gets us the value from the index.
this is all part of the slide the uh, copy slide documentation and once we do this let's run it so in april 2020 we have 400 visitors with 350 leads and 216 add to carts in march everything improved sorry in may everything improved in june leads and add to carts reduced while visitors grew in july visitors grew further but the leads and add to carts reduced and this is a smooth transition that we have from slide to slide creating a bar chart race just directly in powerpoint the full slide the full configuration is available here and it's something that i'd encourage you to try out just to see if you can get that result first and then go through the steps to see the details of how this works you can search for copy slide and copy slide will tell you exactly what the syntax is what are the variables that you can use uh let's go here the fact that you can use copy.val to use the actual rows values copy.key to use the index and you can also use copy.pos and copy.slides and what are examples of expressions that you can use to repeat slides hopefully this gives you a sense of how you can use the copy slide example the copy slide functionality to create something that's as powerful as a bar chart race.